Okay, in this video I'm going to show you a circuit I've been wanting to put together for a while now and I could not do it because I did not have any good toroids laying around. Now the other day I went on a salvage mission and I came across a bunch of really nice toroids and some power supplies like this green and yellow one and then I had this gray one, this was another green one and I came across this huge current transformer, two, uh, two and seven eighths ID around four inches OD and about two and a half inches thick and this is used they call it a current transformer because it's designed to monitor how much current is flowing through a wire what they did is this would be suspended up and a large a heavy gauge wire like a one art or a two art would go through the hole and as current flows through the wire you would have a field around that wire and what would happen this toroid would pick up that field and the copper wire that's wrapped around it would take that field and give you a current reading on a meter. So it takes that current flowing through the wire and it measures roughly how much current's flowing through it. Now if there's a lot of current flowing through this wire, you'd have a stronger field and then the reading on your ammeter would be higher. And if you had a lower current flowing through the wire, then the reading would be lower. It's just like the clamp-on meters. When you squeeze it, it opens up the clamps. You go over the wire, and then you can measure the AC current. It works the same way. Now, a while back, there was a couple of videos put out how they took a toroid just like this, this large one, and they wrapped some copper wire around it, and they took a 1.5-volt battery, and they lit up a nice compact fluorescent light just like this one. It only drew around 150 milliamps on high. And I wanted to make one, but I just didn't have the toroid. But since I came across these, I put one together, and I'll show you how it works. Now, what's important about these toroids, each one of these colors represents a different value for the toroid, the permeability of the toroid. Now, if you wrap a wire, say I get 20-gauge wire, and I wrap, say, 10 turns of 20-gauge wire around this toroid, it's going to give me a particular reading in microhenries or possibly millihenries. Now if I take the same 10 turns and I wrap it on this one, I'll get a different reading. Now this particular one here, when I wrapped 10 turns of 25 gauge wire on it, it only came up around 5 microhenry. Now when I took the same 10 turns and wrapped it around this toroid, I got a value of around 30. And this toroid right here, which was used to put the circuit together, when I wrapped 10 turns around this one, which was a white toroid, and the size of that one was 45 millimeters OD, 28 millimeters ID, 12 and a half millimeters or half inch thick, and that was a white toroid. The ALUI rating, when I checked, it was over 5,000. And when I wrapped 10 turns of 25 gauge wire, it yielded 260 microhenry. And that's important. You want to find a toroid that has a very high ALUI reading or a high permeability, like this 5,000 plus. Now, how the circuit works, you take a 1.5 volt battery, or you take two of these, 3 volts, and you connect it to this circuit and you could light up a regular compact fluorescent light just like this or other little neon tubes I'll demonstrate on these neon lamps right here now this one right here it's hard to see but you can see the electrodes are fairly far apart this is a 250 volt neon lamp and this one here is a 440 volt you can see how far apart those electrodes are and I'm going to demonstrate showing you each one of these with the circuit. Now this is the schematic that Lid Motor had on his YouTube channel. And it's a 1.5 volt battery. You could use 3 volts, 2 in series if you want. Uh, they had a 22 ohm resistor. I played around with a 10 and I ended up eliminating this altogether. So for a little brighter output, I decided to eliminate that. After this resistor, you're going to go into a three-turn winding, 
and you're also going to tie the beginning of this winding into the end of the 10 turn winding. You're going to wind both in the same direction, side by side, but you're going to take the end of this one and connect it to the, the beginning of the 3 turn. So they tie together. The other side of the 3 turn winding goes to a 100 ohm potentiometer into the base of a TIP 3055 NPN transistor. You could also try a D965, that works well too. Now on the side of the 10 turn winding that connects to the collector of the transistor, I went six turns in and I made a tap for four turns and I noticed I was getting better light output, higher voltage using that tap, but I also use this one. So on my setup, which you'll see in a minute, both of these wires could easily be switched. And that is it. It's a very simple circuit. There's not much to it. A couple of windings, a, a potentiometer, a resistor, and an NPN transistor. That's it. Now, it's important that you choose the right toroid. And you want to, if you have an inductance meter, you're going to want to wind 10 turns of 25 gauge wire or even 20 gauge around the toroid and take a reading. See if you get a high value. I noticed if you get, if I got, I noticed, and I noticed when I checked these, I had a very low value on these. And when I wound my three turn and my 10 turn and applied power to the circuit, the, there was no resonance. I wasn't hearing, <clears throat> I wasn't getting any oscillations. And you didn't hear the actual whining noise coming off the toroid, so I knew there was a problem. And when I took the 10 turns of the 25 gauge and I wound it around this toroid, I, I got a reading of 260. And what I did is I hooked up just the three turn and the 10 turn on this and applied power and it rang beautifully. It was oscillating and I knew that this was a good one. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a huge toroid like they have. This one works, I tried it out. The voltage isn't as high as the output on the smaller one, but you can use a smaller toroid. You don't have to use that big one that they used. I noticed a lot of people were posting comments on Lib Motors and Genie's YouTube channel that they couldn't find these toroids and they're searching and searching. So you really don't have to use this big one. What's important is the core value and like I said, just take that 10 gauge wire, just take the 10 turns of the 25 gauge wire, wrap it and take a reading. If you get a couple of hundred micro Henry's, you're good to go. That should work fine. You want to look for an ALUI rating, which is 5,000 or better. And usually the yellow or the white toroids are the ones you want. Now the green one was low. If you find an all yellow one, Usually they're good, or the all-white ones. Here's a close-up. I have one high-voltage lead coming out this side, another one on that side. I covered the entire toroid, plus a little bit more. I maybe went one and a quarter turns with 38-gauge wire. That's for the high-voltage output. Right there are the... 10 turns of 25 gauge and 3 turns of 25 gauge. The transistor, potentiometer, and that is it. What I'm going to do first now is I got this AAA battery ready to go. I'm going to connect the high voltage lead to there. This is a 250 volt neon lamp. All right, now I'm going to apply power to the circuit, and you're going to hear the oscillations coming off the, the toroid. You're going to hear it whining in a minute. I'm going to connect up the battery. Okay, that's very bright. I don't know if you can hear it. Let me adjust this, you'll hear it. Turn it way up. Now if I take the lead off, you'll hear it. Yep, 
you can see the glowing inside the lamp go towards my finger when I touch it. Connect it back. Okay, so see how nice and bright that is. Let's take that off. This is a 440. See the power going between that one. Turning this, adjust it. What we're doing is we're changing the frequency. Okay, I'm now going to connect up the double, AAA battery. I'll now connect this battery, turn the light on, here we go. There we go. Okay, just how bright with this. Off. That's lower. Turn it up. Now it does throw off a good amount of light for a double, uh, one and a half volt battery. Running nicely. Turn it down. It'll run a very, very long time on low. Many hours. Oops, off. That's very, very low right there. Crank it up. So it's pretty cool. So it's a nice little circuit. Makes a great little emergency light or night light. And at least now I demonstrated you don't have to have that large toroid. You could use this little tiny one. See my thumb in it, it's not that big. You can see it works very well. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it a thumbs up. Also subscribe and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Thank you.